the point your tiny just turns into just initiation his damage kind of doesn't factor uh into the play anymore so oh, see what else beast coast want they're gonna take the earth shaker so another hero that has not gotten a whole lot of run at least not in na and saet but oh more strength more lockdown more team fight power here as well so if alliance are looking for a sort of dogpile play to take advantage of maybe the uh aoe that the jakiro has you're gonna have to be careful because the Earthshaker, while not popular still ruins your day if he hits echo onto three or four yeah and the lane seems a little bit weird if it's dawnbreaker shaker with schofield mm -hmm. picking up the shaker but a part of me is is squirming a little bit because i almost want it to be parker kunkka and dark mago shaker because that's his hero yeah. It's Dark Vega Earthshake. It's not a hero you always get to see. Trumped by his Tiny, his Bat Rider, by his Invoker. But every once in a while, it comes through. And I mean, I don't even know what to think anymore. I'm so excited if it's Dark Mega Earthshaker. But I wonder if there's enough time. I, I'm like, it's got to be Dark Mega Kunkka. But their draft really doesn't make sense to me if it is. Because the lane does feel a little bit weird. It feels very vulnerable. And Alliance Lottom have also just decided to go for a counter pick against you for that very reason. Having Dawnbreaker Shaker laning versus a Monkey King kind of sounds like a recipe for disaster. I mm. hope there's a trick here for Beast Coast. One that results in Dark Vega Earthshaker, but fanboying a little bit right now. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since we've gotten to see it. And I guess that the thought process, ET, any, any belief, any credence to the thought of maybe Parker taking the Dawnbreaker as a one and keeping a different pairing open for sacred with the shaker or what do you think yeah i think if they don't move things around so in my ideal mind the shaker mid is going to be dawnbreaker three and they're looking for a four here in their final pick but that's probably not happening so it is a safer bet that they're going to need a parker hero one where i think there's still time for either an ursa or a ta ban from alliance autumn Probably with TA just a little bit higher, knowing who Parker is. But I think that's where Ursa is also still kind of valuable here. It's also where I wonder if the SA teams are really paying a close attention to this Marcy pick. Because really, right. East Coast could pick up Marcy. And they have not only the five strength hero lineup, but they're also ready to fight and ready to brawl. And we already just spoke with Speed is kind of your answer versus nature's prophet and i also think could probably win the man fight versus monkey king yeah. that hero is just brutal it just rips through you but that's where sa seems to adopt those ideas that come out mid tournament a little bit slower than the na squads na likes to play copycat they see the big boys do it they say okay go let's do it well immediately get it into our draft ideas sa is a little bit more stagnant yeah the sa teams always feel like they always take that little bit of extra time to make sure that they've tried it for themselves, right? As you said, NA squads maybe will take someone else's word for it that something will work and are willing to experiment. SA want to be 100% sure that it fits for themselves, which makes it sound like that's the smarter play overall, ET, but sometimes it's not. Sometimes you're a little bit slow on the learning curve. You're that little bit behind, and by the time they do adopt something that they feel comfortable with, it's already been figured out, so yeah they go for the they go for the weaver et but this is potentially sacred's hero the weaver is kind of in his wheelhouse so very interested to see who slots what because that would basically put either parker on the dawnbreaker or dark mago yeah and like you said i think in this situation it fixes their lane problem now so now if it's mm -hmm. sacred weaver schofield shaker that lane makes a little bit more sense you dodge out the monkey king carry which of course is going to be lumiere's hero and then you probably just make it Dark Mago Kunkka, and then Parker Dawn. And then the lanes feel balanced out now. Not the hero I expected them to go for, but it makes sense. It works. It'll do what they need it to do. And they get to dodge the very, very difficult Jakiro Monkey lane, which would have made any melee hero kind of cry. Oh. And they swap it up. So now, is it going to be analog? Yeah. Which mm. makes sense, because you can play mid-Monkey versus mid-Kunkka, even though... It's kind of an old matchup, one that, of course, in the past heavily favored the Monkey King, but then got his numbers mixed around a little bit and felt a little bit weaker, but that's perfect. And they re-counter the Weaver. Even though they lost their Jakira Monkey lane, 
they get the direct counter versus Sacred Weaver, who now has to play versus Time Dilation. I mean, Alliance Lottom, what a beautiful last pick. It's it's just about perfect, and yeah. So we get to see the Faceless Void. They've got that AoE damage from Jakiro to maybe follow up on the Chronos. We get a mid monkey. We get to see a carry Dawnbreaker here. And of course, uh Sacred Weaver. The only thing that would have made it better, as you were sort of alluding to before, would have been if we got to see the old Dark Mago position to Earthshaker, but ET. You know, you can't have everything. Yeah, you know, getting a little greedy. It'll come out, you know, eventually, but uh we'll see. Maybe at the major, you know, there you when, go. when things matter a little bit more. But it's also just Dark Mega Kunko. It's stable. And even though it's not the best four position in the world for Schofield, it, at least you're not playing versus a Rubik. You don't have to worry about your spells getting stolen. It's one of those uh, games where neither side uh, is really too disappointed that uh, Rubik is banned out. It is such a great Rubik game for anyone, but that's why it doesn't exist. But so many great spells in this game. Well, we are going to get things underway here. As we mentioned before, another elimination series and a pair of squads in interesting positions. Beast Coast trying to, you know, maybe salvage a run here, try and avoid what would be uh, an earlier exit than they might have wanted. Meanwhile, for Alliance Latum, trying to keep it going. As we mentioned, they've already taken down Thunder Awake, and so... They would really love to go on a nice little tour here, ET, just knocking off the top teams in their region one after another. Yeah, and already action underway. Autumn getting out of the base, speeding up those uh, treants as well, getting a little bit more vision, but uh, they will just find a stinger. And a stinger that will be sadly treeless in this lane, analog and Lumiere. Going to work here, evacuating the trees, making sure it's going to be that much more difficult of a treant lane. But Stinger also is ready. He knows what's coming. This is just what happens nowadays. Yeah. I mean, you just get used to it, not being able to play with that tree line. But he got his vision down. He'll be just fine. And well, we'll see what Parker does here on the position one Dawnbreaker. A little bit of maybe what we were talking about before with the Marcy, right? Yes, this is a carry dawn, but, you know, you hit that power spike where you have hammer and starbreaker and there's no reason why you can't go in and look for a kill just like you would have a uh, in a supporting role. Yeah, and then map slows down a little bit. We're going to kind of hunker down here in our lanes, but we already have a lane switch up. Vitaly's coming bottom in Schofield. We'll see that, well... There's a little bit of a different person down here, and he's trying to get the aggro on the creeps, but yeah, that's not how that works. But already, here's the lanes, and Vitaly is going up versus the Weaver Shaker instead of the Faceless. One that I really thought would have favored Alliance Lotham, but instead they're putting their Void into maybe a slightly more difficult lane, but is a much easier Jakiro game. Playing versus double melee just means those dual breaths will always connect on at least two heroes in most situations it. okay. it's just very annoying very efficient mm -hmm. a situation where maybe alliance lots of them are figuring lumiere is going to find farm wherever we put him so maybe a little more emphasis on trying to harass parker could go better than sort of having the lanes in a more conventional setup and i mean et if that if that works and more power to him if parker does not get off to a good start here on the dawnbreaker well, you're not the slowest farmer in the world, but it's not exactly flash farming either. Yeah, and as we stand currently, he's getting away with it. It's a tough lane and one where, especially getting those range creeps, is going to be a little bit more difficult. But, you know, could be worse. They already have the uh, small camp locked up as well, so they have that stability and they're getting their levels quite freely. More so, I'm wondering how bottom lane is going to end up going. I think this is a lane that can get really scary for Vitaly really quickly if Sacred gets a few levels, but I wonder what Omisha is going to be able to do with that timing, as well as just seeing the tiny on that radiant bottom side of the map. I feel like I just haven't seen this in forever. It just feels so alien. It just looks weird. Mm -hmm. It's not the position we're used to seeing him play in, but as you said, it could get a little dicey. 
Sacred is going to be able to do a decent amount of damage with the levels in Schofield. I mean, he's level 1, but that's all he needs. A well-placed Fissure, and Tali doesn't have any sort of movement. He'd just be looking to, I guess, try to get a TP out before the damage kills him. And both fours, and I, I guess you call them both fours, are playing extremely sacrificially. It's where uh, both Italian and Sacred are just getting all of the levels just pumped into their faces. A situation where really no matter how many levels your fours get, they really can't have too much effect on this lane. And they're just kind of getting stopped with every pull, even though there is a nice attempt there. But one that is trying to get interrupted by Skillfield, and it will. But that's also where Skillfield has the boots. So when it comes to getting bounties, water runes, the Shaker can rotate much more easily than how Amisho is currently set up. Mm -hmm. He's got that little bit more mobility factor working for him, as you see already. Oh, for a moment, thought he was going to start moving off, but sides against it. But ET, that leads us into our mid matchup here. Monkey King up against any melee core is normally a situation where we give him a rather sizable advantage. And he does have the advantage so far, but... Well, Dark Mago on this Kunkka is presumably still going for at least one Bracer, so he might just be tanky enough to not win these exchanges, but hold his own uh, against the Jingu. Yeah, and very wisely went for the Boots Rush, just knowing that he can reset those stacks a little bit easier with the safety of his own tower. But the way this matchup goes is you've got four levels. Analog is able to be the bully. He's able to really put a lot of harass, get those Jingu stacks, and then be annoying. And then the lane gets very difficult because if there's one thing Monkey King can't do, it's defend against creep push as the kills are actually top. It's just that simple time dilution play. They just walk the treant back and it is a very slow retreat when you've got liquid fire and time dilation on you. Yeah, they got liquid fire, they got dual breath, they got dilation. I think Lumiere maybe even got a bash in there too at one point, but Stinger... I mean, you're supposed to be a little bit more durable than usual just because you're a tree, but against that much slow, it's just too tough. And now Parker bashed up twice and hammered backwards there. I don't know what he was trying to do, but ends up getting picked off. And now Stinger's just trying to sort of dance his way out of this, and I think he should be able to make it away. But that is a rough one. Parker just not quite paying attention to his HP and not showing enough respect to the slows in the DOT. Yeah, and that's where Time Dilation is just a great value spell, especially versus the Dawnbreaker, who just has to use two abilities to ever make a nice trade happen for him. And just unfortunate, but great timing from Lumiere. And we'll have to see, because Lumiere, it's been a hot second since he's uh, he's played the Faceless Void, even though this was kind of his hero back in the day. But whether or not he goes for the Midas, or if he's just a Maelstrom Rusher, I don't think he typically likes to go for the Mask of Madness for a very good reason as well. Just being in this game, survivability is going to be everything. So we'll have to see, but you could definitely see him go in either direction. For now, though, it is the Midas queued up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Going for the Midas. Meanwhile, Omisho is in some trouble down bot. Sacred's going to pop the Shikuchi, and yeah. Between Shikuchi on a Weaver and Boots for Schofield, your Tiny just can't leave once he's in the fight he's just kind of stuck there so east coast are able to get their first kill and oh sacred is making a lot more out of this lane than i think we might have anticipated just sort of based on the draft yeah and now that you've got those initial kills with the urn you just become very annoying and this is why this is one of sacred's best heroes he just is playing this all the time. He's always in a pub somewhere playing Weaver. It's really just simply the best hero for him in a lot of situations. Still one where he has to be careful, especially versus the Nature's Wrath. A lot of damage, but yeah, top. Analog came in with the haste. Dark Mago followed him up with the TP, and at this point, yeah, Analog, oh. you're not getting out of that one. They cut the tree down. They don't have vision on him initially, but now they do, but Analog is going to try to fight this one out, but he just can't win it. Dark Mago gets the kill, picked up both of those kills, in fact, ET, so... Well... Thought process is not wrong there. You've got a hasted Monkey King, let's try to make a play, but... They just kind of assumed Dark Mago would not follow. Yeah, but he's immediately in there, he's got the completed phase boots, and this is what Dark Mago does best. He gets active early, and he's out of the difficult stage of the game versus MK. He can rotate now. He pushes in the waves. He's very obnoxious. 
they do get a return kill bottom onto Schofield and maybe a little bit more revenge, but now all they have to be wary of is the Nature's Prophet and his rotations. Wrath of Nature is online. Any play globally is now going to have to be very careful. It's where suddenly those level sixes is now going to be the, the new stage of the game. Parker's getting close to Solar Guardian. Any play could be met with that global response. Mm -hmm. Just going to be able to blood heroes in on both sides if something breaks out here, so... Got to be careful. We just saw one kind of overextension there from Alliance. Lots of them that cost them, so... We'll see how their approach looks here as Parker... Well... Getting a little bit pressured up here. His Treant steps out of lane, so his, his tower is going to start taking some damage, but the Treant's not dead, just back in the base, so the Living Armor could come into play here. In the meantime, in the river, Amisho, well, he, I mean, he took away the Invis rune. That's a solid move, but now he's got to be able to escape from this duo. Wrath of Nature comes in. Not going to be overly helpful. Nature's Grasp ticks onto Amisho for, I think, like a second, but... Just that little bit of slow helps out. They find the kill, and then... Well, back up in the top lane. Parker not really under all that much pressure here. In fact, Sacred... Is just able to slip in there, find a quick kill onto Gardic, but now... Yeah, Parker, oh, that's perfect. that's a little bit too... A little bit too rough. TPing right in the middle of the open. He's not dead yet, but... Eventually, they do manage to bring him down, but here comes Dark Mago TPing in... Can they find someone? Yes, they can. The X is down. The ghost ship is coming through. Vitaly's going to get hit. Good avalanche from Elmisho, though, to try and break up this initial fight, but they're still taking a lot of damage. I don't know if Sacred wants to do this, though. He's popped Shikuchi. He is still holding on to his time lapse, but he's going to get stunlocked before he gets the chance to use it. And at that point, Dark Mago was too far away to really follow that up anyway. Yeah, and... You get to kind of realize in this situation that Beast Coast were really banking on Parker coming back into that fight. Both supports were situated getting farm, getting XP, and of course recovering in the two empty lanes. But that ends up killing Sacred because he overextends himself thinking that something's going to come when it just simply isn't there anymore in the play. And then Parker has to walk, do the walk of shame, gets back to where he wants to be, but it's a pretty ugly play that also results in their tower going down. Hmm. Not all on the same page there and now. The only one who was pushing that tower down bot was Schofield, who cannot take that tower in any reasonable time frame. So Vitaly TP's back in and well, no tower trade-off. Just them getting the kills, the tower, and largely being able to reset back into a defensive position. And of course, when it comes to those pushes... Alliance will always be favored just because they simply have the Nature's Prophet. They're able to get those objectives very quickly if you're not careful on Beast Coast. But Beast Coast are also getting ready to aggress here. I think really all they're waiting for is that next ghost ship, which is up in 15 seconds. And then Dark Mako still has dealer's choice here for whoever he wants to kill. I think Tiny is still probably the most difficult hero to kill just because of how annoying the avalanche stun is in between your x marks but anybody else is pretty much free game here especially with lumiere already committing the chronosphere you know he's not really going to be involved with the game at large at least not the next few minutes even though after all of that fighting he finally has his midas so lumiere is uh getting going here he's getting very farmed very quickly you know nobody else on the map is really quite as farm focused everybody else is really turning into more utility more small items everybody's gearing up for those 10 to 15 minutes of fighting that are coming up pretty soon yeah parker though is looking for some pretty expensive stuff here he's got a deso and a bkb queued up so you know not quite in the same position as his teammates however he's the guy with the solar guardian right so he could just sort of pop that ult get into the fights and at that point, maybe you don't need those smaller items. Maybe can, he can afford to be a little bit greedier, but... We'll see if those openings come, because they had one, as we were sort of pointing out in the top lane, and Parker didn't really feel like going on it, so... It'll be interesting to see just how quickly he can sort of move along with this build, and I think whether or not Alliance Lotsam ET can punish him again. They've got two kills on him already, so... If they could set him back even further... Well... Parker really would not be anything other than his ult at that stage. Yeah, right now, though, they are splitting the map. As we saw the last time we got to cast Beast Coast, 
They are just using it slightly more efficiently than their opponents. They're able to spread themselves out pretty thin, even though there is quite the push happening on their mid tower right now. One that is currently not being responded to, even though there's an Arcane Rune Kunkka and a Weaver on their way here. But as soon as the cores show, it might be time to go, but Gardek might already be taken out. Spirit Vessel reveal, and give him two more charges as well. Very nice for the Weaver. Done, able to get the kill in place. Meanwhile, Tali, yeah, strikes back, throws out the Wrath of Nature. Stinger gets taught, caught up top in a situation where really he was just trying to hit six and he did do so, but there's no tower, there's no objective there to defend. He was just trying to build himself up and then back down bot. Amisho gets caught. Sacred Dark Mago and Schofield have all the damage and knockdown they need and the trade is going to go in their favor overall, two for one. Yeah, now, rolls reversed a little bit. This is, however, where Beast Coast are straight up trash when it comes to hitting buildings. A macro pirate will do it without creeps. There's really not much to do. And then everybody decides that, yeah, this is kind of a waste of our time. And it is. They are getting held out by the POS 5 while the rest of the lineup farms. So they'll give up on that play pretty quickly. But that's where until we see Parker get this Deso, really, there is no easy way for Beast Coast to get a lot of these objectives, which is a problem that they have that maybe will come into play a little bit more later down the line. But that's where those uh, untraditional roles just make you feel a little bit harder to actually play Dota. It's just going to be a different route. You're going to get to the same end goal, but the way you get there is just more difficult to see where a them are way better in that regard their heroes just do their jobs they do what they need to do they're farming right now especially for the ags on vitale then the nature's prophet can really get confident in these team fights but their lineup just makes a little bit more sense mm -hmm. and if you're beast coast well you're still doing all right you still got a 3k lead items are coming along here sacred also working towards his bk or not his bkp his agonim scepter so it's unconventional, but as long as they can continue to buy time for themselves, it's starting to come together. Parker, though, does have to be a little careful here. He is farming very close to the enemy, but he's also unbelievably close to having that Desolator just a hundred or so gold away. His teammates, though, oh, they're looking for a kill, and they did spot El Misho again. Just about the same place he died last time, too. And the same result here. He's going to try to get away. Oh, hold on. 5 HP. No. Okay. Schofield just shuts that down. Yeah. And even though uh, Sacred had every intention of taking that kill, giving Schofield them is uh, just getting him closer and closer to that Blink Dagger or the Shard. But with how much gold Schofield actually has, he pretty much could just buy the straight up Blink Dagger. He's incredibly farmed. He's very happy. He's had a really quiet game, but... He's found his levels, he's gotten the tome, and Beast Coast just using the map more. It is that same story we saw last time. To a T, they are just spread out, farming everywhere, getting what they need, and increasing this gap between their opponents. Yep. It was just simple for them. It's a simple plan, but it's working out spectacularly in Alliance Lotum. Now would be the time where you maybe start thinking... Maybe we can apply some pressure, but they don't want to go until they have their items either, which is entirely understandable, E.T. It's just a question of, are you waiting too long? By the time you get your items, what are you going to be facing off against on the other side? Yeah, and that's where Alliance Lottom. The one thing they're really waiting for are just these BKBs, and it's kind of crazy to say that's what we're talking about 15 minutes into a game, but... It's what Monkey's going for, it's what Lumiere is about to shift into, it's what Vitali will get after his BKB, and that's why there is that hesitance right now. They just don't want to throw versus Beast Coast's very scary spells, and they don't have the best partner for Lumiere to smoke with. It's where, unfortunately, because they don't have Snapfire Faceless Void, he's paired up with the Jakiro, there isn't that quick damage, that easy play. They're also waiting for Blink Dagger on Omicho, so really... There isn't play to be made. It's why the map has really started to slow down for really both sides as we are getting those items slowly but surely. And the biggest one so far is certainly this Earthshaker Blink Dagger. Skullfield's got a smoke as well. This is where we start to see those uh, tides change just a little bit. More aggression is on the way here from Beast Coast. Mm -hmm. Skullfield's got it delivered now and 
He is going to look to make something happen here. The question, E.T., is where should he be looking? Tali has been poking his head out pretty consistently here in the bottom lane. Is that the best option for them in terms of just getting a quick kill, or do you think they smoke and go deeper? Well, question's already being answered, actually. Hmm. Schofield. Had to use the Tumblr's toy for the little bit of extra movement there, but it works out. He's got the poor man's blink and the real man's blink. And they get Vitali and caught him when he had used the Wrath of Nature right before that as well. So he is kind of tapped for a little bit in addition to, you know, being dead. Yeah. Just gets punished is the first easy punish, but really... Now they just need to make sure they're not getting picked off, even though Analog... Dog. Oh, Dark Mago is so good, and now synced up perfectly. Yep, did dodge out the boat damage, but there's no way he walks this one out. There's just too many abilities, too many disables. Tidal Wave oh, just and then they in get case. Boomier. Yep, Echo Slam just works. Thought he was going to be safe with this high ground vision, but it's just not enough. They find the perfect angle, and then they immediately run back bottom, because guess what? We just all showed top. Who's going to be bottom? It's Vitaly just respawned. And this is where Beast Coast just are playing. And even though they lost their one series, they play at a pace that really no other team has set in the tournament. You said the aggression was coming, E.T., but that's... I mean, that was just one after another after another. The three perfect targets all lining up. Of course, will they line up like that again in the future? Yeah, who can say? But if they're alone, Beast Coast have proven they've got the means to take them down. I believe that was the Ags finally finished off on Vitali here, so... Yeah, the Wrath of Nature is a little bit more formidable. The Root may come into play here, but... It doesn't really solve their issues. The BKBs are still kind of the hot-ticket item that they need. Yeah, this is a power spike, though. Omisha with the Blank Dagger, Lumiere with the Chrono. They're looking top, and he would like it, but... It looks like they're going to have to settle here, and they will take Schofield. Not the ideal kill, but... It's something, and it does reveal that the Blink Dagger is finished up on the Tiny, but we're still waiting a little bit. Worst case scenario is if they would lose to Tali right now while the rest of the lineup is just doing their own thing, but looks like that's not going to happen, and we still get to see a play maybe happen with the Wrath of Nature as mid. Uh... I don't know about that one. Dark Mago, not super confident in his damage, but they get the toss back. They're going to force Sacred in. They do take him down. Lumiere thought about it for a moment, but won't pop the Chronosphere onto Dark Mago. They had used a lot of their spells already, but E.T., while this is going down, they're going to make a play onto Vitali, recognizing now he is entirely by himself, and... Well, they find that pickoff. It turns into a trade-off of the offlaners, which... If your Alliance lots them right now, I think you're still kind of okay with, because you just need plays to go your way in general. Unfortunately, though, BKB finished up. Now, Dark Mago is incredibly annoying. He's just going to farm so quickly now as well with the Tidal Wave, which is really the reason why I think we've seen Tidal Wave become that new popular item build is mid. Again, there's an X on the monkey. Don't know if he wants to continue this play, though, because Schofield, mm -hmm. he's kind of walking back and forth. Schofield was there. Maybe they want that layup, but... They see the ward, they get vision placed, and they decide to peel back just a little bit. Even though Beast Coast want a big fight, they want Alliance to actually go onto Dark Mago because they've got so much gas in the tank right now. They've got the Solar Guardian, they've got a new Blink Dagger and Vitali. Oh, he's going to be on the run. Not able to catch him, though. Sacred gets hit by the Wrath of Nature. The Root does come into play. Now they go for the toss back. Can they kill him off before the time lapse? Well, they they can certainly kill him if they do that. Lumiere, willing to pull the trigger on the Chronosphere, and okay, big kill going Alliance Latum's way. Of course, now the Faceless Void has to sort of chill out for a bit, but they needed to use the Chronosphere ET, and it's not just a support pickoff, right? Sacred is worth a fair amount of money. He's the lowest net worth core, but it's still a solid pick for them. No, definitely is, and most importantly, gets that timer going down in the Chronosphere. Lumiere had been unable to utilize that ability so far, and with that kill, he's got a BKB. And that's the second BKB on his team. It's where Alliance Lottom are going to be able to navigate through those team fights without, without having to worry about Schofield or Dark Mago. And then the question for Beast Coast, 
is now how can we force those BKBs? How can we take a fight long enough that we can punish you after it's already been expended? And will that team fight actually transpire as bottom? Vitali gets interrupted, but it doesn't actually break the TP. There you go. A great spell, a great Ag Shard, but isn't the stun they needed. Schofield was unable to connect. Tali saw his life flash before his eyes there, but he does get out. But now, well, Alliance lets him know. East Coast, they may not have gotten the target they wanted, but they are on the hunt. They immediately smoke again. But where do they go? They're pushing to the north now, but that is going to lead them into just about all of Alliance Lotsam's lineup. Do they just take the fight anyway? They get eyes on El Misho. Dark Mago, though. Yeah, he wants a higher value target. They've caught Vitali. He tries to TP away, but the X is going to pull him back in. Ghost Ship connects, so the Guardian is in. Vitali goes down. And now Stinger, well, he forced the BKBs, but mm -hmm. immediately dies for it. But on the back end, Sacred, he's trying to get a punish play onto El Misho. That sets up for the tidal wave. Looks like the Tiny is going to end up going down here. Parker blinks in. Finishes the job, and well, for the most part, that is going to work out quite nicely. Both those kills go into Parker's hands. The nine-second BKBs, I think, were used uh, by everyone who had it. Yeah, so all in all, solid work there for them, but Dark Mago really has to be given a lot of credit there et he could have gone for the easier kill onto the tiny instead he knows vitali's still there kept on chasing him and uh sets up for the kill yeah and that is not how these team fights should go for alliance Lottom. of course that was a team fight without chrono where lumiere couldn't assist in the control at all but they do not want to trade their bkbs for just dark mago's bkb that is exactly what dark Mago is going to look to do he's going to try to force you into these awkward situations and then will kill you after the fact, but that presents opportunities for Schofield. And speaking of Schofield, well, he's found someone. It's really hard to see at the, at the bottom of the map. It's where you, you kind of want to hide the HUD, but. And well, Stinger dies on the other side, but they will take that trade off, especially considering, guess who gets the kill again? It's Parker who picks it up and then Sacred actually manages to push himself in there. He gets one kill onto Gardic, but didn't really have a great escape plan at that moment and now neither does dark mago there's a solar guardian though will that be enough it's healing him up he's dodging some hits at this point and they're gonna start to turn analog in some trouble trying to kill up with the jingu not gonna be enough taken down El Misho now pulled back in by the x into the ghost ship and dark mago you owe parker a beer or something because he was dead to rice without that solar guardian yeah great tpn great follow-up play just took way too long and that's the first time we get to see those heroes actually sync together, and it just works. And funnily enough, Schofield still doesn't find a time to use his Echo Slam in the team fight, but that's just because it hasn't been necessary just yet. Dark Mago is just large, in charge, in your face. It takes so long to kill him. It takes so much damage as well, where he pops the blade mill, and then you have to make the choice. Do we even want to hit this guy anymore because he's just reflecting it back onto us? And sure, maybe Faceless Void doesn't care about it, but the monkey certainly does. And now you're in an awkward stage. You don't have Chronosphere. You'd have to make a play with El Misho, but we're getting past Tiny's power spike as well. So our picks are getting more difficult. And then that problem we talked about in draft where, okay, Tiny, who are we killing? Uh, at this point, the Shaker, question mark? Everybody is just tanky. And Analog just got a tree cut. Yep, he is stunned up. Gonna have to try and fight his way through this, but no BKB for about eight more seconds. Stunned up by Schofield and tries for a play with the mischief there, but it's not gonna work. He gets picked off, and now over on the other side of the map, well, Parker's getting hit. There's an attempt from Schofield to get in there, but not in time, and now Schofield may go down himself. Okay. Well, Amisho says, yeah, we'll, we'll go on the Shaker, but getting the kill on Parker first, obviously. Uh, makes that a lot more valuable. Still leaves them down 9k ET, but they are starting to look better, and I like the way that they're playing this. Sacred, he picked up this Aghanim Scepter a little while back. Since he's picked it up, though, he died first in one fight and wasn't on the same side of the map as that second push onto Parker, so Alliance Lotsam are doing a good job of just trying to neutralize the value of that Ag's pickup entirely. And okay. 
get to claim that mid tier one. Alliance Lottom. Really doing a fantastic job. The toss into Ice Paths have just been on point. They can't really afford to mess that combo up either. Mm -hmm. In that situation, wasn't too tight because there wasn't a BKB involved, but they mess up that play on either the Dawnbreaker or the Kunkka, and that can really blow up in your face. But so far, it's been on point. And really, before, you know, it's kind of funny. Skullfield doesn't need to echo, you know? He's been able to just sit by and let his teammates do the work, but eventually, Schofield wants to echo. He wants to find a play. He wants to do something here. And then got his tree cut again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are just hunting him down. Everybody's got quelling blades. And, well, if you're analog, there really is no solution to that other than just trying to preemptively BKB. But duration is ticking down. It's on seven seconds now. So it's kind of a rough time of it. But really not what Alliance Lotsam want right now. They're trying to use him for vision. Part of the reason why he's getting his tree cut down so often is because he's trying to scout with that tree dance, but if he keeps getting punished, it's not doing you any good, and now Roshan gets taken. Dark Mago has the Aegis. Parker just got himself a Basher as well that he's looking for an upgrade into an Abyssal, so they want to fight. They will lose Schofield, though, right at the start of that engagement. But Stinger looking to catch him. Pushes himself up onto the high ground. Does get the overgrowth. That forces Lumiere's BKB. And now without the BKB, I don't think he wants to be here. He has Chrono ET, but... You're not going to get a guaranteed initiation without your magic immunity, so... Alliance lots him pull back, but they do a pretty solid job of that. They get the kill. They pull back. Nobody gets caught, and... They can just reset. Yeah, they escape. They buy some time for analog is unfortunate that you're losing out some of these BKB charges now Lumiere's on the six second, but it could be worse. A problem though, is that Beast Coast should be able to get a pretty uh, good push onto this bottom tier two. One that will probably just get glyphed on, but is still very nice. I think El Misho as well. Yeah, killed the, killed the creep wave, then got out. So they glyph bottom, then it will probably defend the tower just a little bit longer, but this is also just the armor timing that Beast Coast have built up. AC's done, Desso's done. Hell, they've even got a medallion on Stinger. They're just looking to be annoying, very, very annoying, and then just blow you up. And of course, both Dawnbreaker and Kunkka, heroes that both utilize that uh, physical damage buff up so much. It spells like the uh, Celestial Hammer and the Tidebringer. Just a very annoying draft, even though this isn't the same waterworks hex ags kunkka that we're typically used to seeing yeah he is trying to make a play anyway though pushing it onto the jakiro <laughs> momentarily locked down but yeah tidal wave just pulls gardic right back into it and they find the kill analog oh this time he did pop his bkb so he is no he is not stinger <laughs> oh stinger's just being very mean to analog four staffs in for the overgrowth and and that Monkey King just cannot catch a break. No, nope. has to pop his BKB as well, but it doesn't really matter. And this is where, sadly, Mid Kunkka just feels like it has a much better place in Dota than Mid Monkey will ever. He's kind of scrambling for any build that feels all right. He had to turn the latter part of his Echo Saber into a Mage Slayer because just the normal thing to do. Now El Misho's on the lamb right now, but Skillfield's right there, ready to stun you up. Alumir's looking for a play, but. Then I think this fight just becomes too big, and he knows if he goes for the Chrono there, then a Dark Mega will come over and throw a Ghost Ship into it, and then he probably gets nothing. And Alliance Lottom are starting to feel the pressure. Yeah, the ability for Beast Coast to just have consistent teamfight answers here compared to Alliance Lottom, who are still very much dependent on, on home run plays, right? The Chronosphere, the Wukong's Command, although... When was the last time we saw a Wukong's Command? It's been quite a while, but East Coast teamfight abilities are up much sooner. And so they just keep on throwing them out here. And at a certain point, if you're Alliance Lotta ET, do you just have to try anyway? Put your head down and go for something because their high ground is getting poked at here. It's getting poked at. They're getting tunneled. They're, they're getting forced into their base. Lumiere's looking for some revenge here, but this is also the problem on Faceless Void. He's got Scotty Mjolnir. He does a ton of damage. He's got the level 20 talent. He can do what he needs to in a lot of these fights, 
But it's no Daedalus. It's no Butterfly. You have to split hairs with I Faceless Void. Dead, Choosing yeah. between survivability and straight-up damage. Damage that you'd hope the rest of the lineup can help you out with. As Parker. Oh, oh he gets away. No! And he's back up top. I mean, the most unfortunate of misfortunes. That's just... <laughs> he's just gone. You know, Misha, I mean, he tried to be the hero, right? Blink Dagger Force Staff, but he just couldn't get in range. And now, Gardic, will he get home? No, he will not. Schofield stuns him up. They're, just, they're even going to just leave this for Sacred. Doesn't quite work out that way. Stinger gets the kill with the Leech Seed, but... Man, oh man, if they could have found that initiation ET. Parker, I mean, he's strong. He's got BKB there, but... They could have killed him. Instead, they lose two, and any sense of momentum there gets kind of just, just torn out of their hands. Yep, they miss out on the isolated hero. The isolation that was caused because Vitaly was putting himself out in such a dangerous part of the map, but that's just kind of the way this goes. The Aegis is claimed, however, so something they won't have to worry about. They can actually just straight up Chrono Dark Mago if they find him in a disadvantageous position, but Dark Mago is farmed. He's got a full Silver Edge. He's starting to do so much physical damage. He's starting to change up his build as well. But still, we're waiting for a Chronosphere. Wimir is not really farming very quickly anymore either. He's been gunning for this play for a good two or three minutes at this point. Meanwhile, his ally on the run now, Amisho getting tracked all the way back to the base and should be able to make his way out, but Alliance Lotum are not progressing the game. They are just getting stuck in their base, smoking out, maybe placing a ward or two, but then in the D-worded in Dark Mago. Okay, this is the play. They did toss him back. Do they have the damage to kill him off, though? The Solar Guardian's coming in. The Chrono is going to be deployed, but Sacred, he's waiting. Yeah, there's going to be the ult. It's not enough, though, Dark Mago. They waited a little bit too long, so cool. He's time lapsed, but he didn't actually get much health back, but at this point... What else can they get? Monkey King in trouble. Does the DOT kill him? Not quite. He's able to get himself away. And because of that, ET, this is going to go down as a win for Alliance Lotum. Not a fantastic one, but they get the Kunkka dead. They only had to lose one support. No further damage to their high ground. So it goes well, but it did cost them pretty much every ult they had. Yeah. And it cost them all of their BKBs and Chronosphere. So now all they need to do is not get ahead of themselves. Do not let yourself get picked up. Schofield is still waiting for his Echo Slam, and he has it. So if any core shows, it's why they're gunning for Vitaly right now. And Vitaly, who really has no way to escape, so he will be the cost, but a cost they're willing to give over. They give more farming time to Lumiere. They let the Faceless Void take some more of the map. But they got to be careful. Without BKBs, that's when they're at their weakest, easily. It's so easy for Beast Coast to then pick you apart. Even though Sacred, yeah, needs the toss, found the perfect angle. And that's another core. Got ahead of himself, thought he would have been safe with the Schofield sitting behind him, but Schofield himself was just too far away. And nicely done by Analog there. Had to fake out his Boundless Strike two or three times, but got the angle, kept him stunned inside of their detection, and... Alliance Lotsam, you've been doing well so far, but this, this is 100% bait. Dark Mago just says, I'll, I'll take it and, and walk away, so never mind. But, well, how do they want to deal with this? They proved ET that they have the damage to kill Dark Mago, but they do need him completely isolated from the entire rest of his team, and even then it kind of got a little bit iffy, so... Are they willing to take a chance? They are going to push in there. They got the root coming in, but... Well, to the south, Vitaly. He is in some trouble here. Rooted in place. BKB did not really help him, but... Secondary fight's breaking out here. Dark Mago is low on health again, but there's going to be the jump in. Dark Mago not dead yet. Lumiere, how much further do you want to push this? Analog did come in and drop the Wukong, so they're at least able to get onto the supports here. Schofield dead. Stinger dropping. And they did track down Dark Mago as well. Lumiere was able to continue the chase, but he is going to die for it. Parker and Sacred combined forces to take him down, and now might be the time for Alliance Lotsam to back up. They've used pretty much all the spells they have. They get a Boundless in there onto Sacred, but they know that they've got to leave. Skardic? Okay. 
Force staffed while he's TPing, so he makes it home. El Misho is now going to try to get away as well. I don't know if he's living, though. Parker may just run him down. Yeah. And then Wrath of Nature. Yeah. Okay. Forces out the ult, but Sacred was holding it for pretty much that exact situation, and he is able to back himself out. But if your Alliance lots him again, that's very costly, but... Still no damage to your high ground, still finding some kills here and buying time, even if it is chaotic. The only problem, E.T., is the hero they wanted to buy time for is one of the heroes who died, so Lumiere is not exactly farming while this is happening, but Analog is at least building himself up. Yeah, and Beast Coast are definitely getting caught with some of their sloppiness when it comes to the execution of these team fights, a few dropped chain stuns, a few spells uh, from Alliance Lottom that just get off in between, as well as Parker just not having full mana, just being out on the map. Of course, very expensive spells on the Dawnbreaker hero and a lot of items that cost mana as well, but uh, is really the reason why that team fight goes kind of wrong for them. It's just hard for him to be out onto the map. Love this. Just buys boots to travel, fixes that problem pretty much outright, lets him actually play and stay away from the fountain a little bit longer. But this is also the game where Beast Coast need to kill their opponents several times over before we can actually see anything change or happen. Where Alliance Lottom are still waiting for that one perfect, decisive, definitive team fight win. And then they've got all the network they need to win this one. While Roche dying quickly, so few armor, negative 25. And they gotta get in there, and they're not getting there in time. Lumiere's just not close enough to the pit, so they lose what really could have been a pretty easy contest for them. And, oh, Dark Mago, caught by the Wrath of Nature, so he's not able to make that initiation happen. But they are pushing their way forward, trying to catch somebody. I think they've got eyes, yeah, they've got eyes on Gardic. He's going to blow the Jakiro up, but that's really not the high impact kill that they wanted. He does have buyback. Got to wait a little while for Macropire to be back up, but they're hunting for more. Schofield, does he look right? No, he looks left instead, but left is where Lumiere is hanging out. But at this point, Schofield's a little bit too far away from his own teammates. Or is he sacred? This is very risky for him. Lumiere has ult, but not going to pull the trigger, so... Sacred and Schofield try to get in for the damage. They don't kill anybody, but... At that point, E.T., probably just in their best interest to back off before they got turned on. Yeah, they get run back into the base. Beautiful scan there onto Vitaly, but one that will result in Parker guessing in the wrong direction. Now Vitaly's dancing, but dancing into a Shaker. Mm. But they also see the Void coming over. Parker's dancing with death here a little bit, but there's the initiation, and there's going to be a boat in your chrono. That is not what they wanted. Vitaly does get pulled away, though, but doesn't have the health to survive. He's going to get taken down. Lumiere now caught by the Overgrowth. Teammate coming in for the Wukong's command, but for Analog, well, he needs help here, and he did just stun the Dawnbreaker out of Solar Guardian, but that just means Parker gets to hit the Monkey King instead of El Misho. So, um, you know, congratulations. You you bashed him, but you kind of killed yourself in the process. And now if you're Alliance Latum, well, you've been holding off this aggression in your base for so long, E.T., but it's, it's coming now. Yeah, and they just lost that fight way too close to their own Tier 3s. There will be a glyph for at least one of these creep waves, but... The AC, the Deso, all of that building damage is just enough, and the cooldowns just aren't going to be there. Even if they bought back, they wouldn't have any of their spells. They wouldn't have any of their BKBs, so there's no point. And it's just going to be a quick cleanup from Beast Coast. It's going to mop up everything. And now, worst case scenario is that you lose all of your racks, and you still have to buy back when you don't have BKBs or your ultimates. And that's where the Void and the Monkey King are falling right in there. That's why they saved their Glyph, saying that yeah, we're going to lose two racks, we're going to glyph for the final one, and then try to hold our buybacks, but you guys might just get megas at this rate. Dark Mago has a full hex that is <clears throat> in his backpack, but he has it. Parker, okay. Just jump straight in for the kill onto Gardic, so your Jakiro is dead. There is a Octarine core on your Weaver, so 
East Coast, they want to end the game, and Alliance Lotsam, you have got to respond here. <laughs> Schofield with the Echo Slam takes down Omisho. Immediate buyback, though. The supports are back in, but look at Dark Mega. With the Aegis, standing on that front line, creating the distraction. His teammates get the Megas. Sacred decided not to use the time lapse there. Instead, they're going to pop the Aegis. But he is going to get stunned up a second time, and now they do need to be able to help him, but there is going to be Parker coming in. Solar Guardian connecting. Dark Mago still not dead yet, lasting a long time here. Eventually, though, they do bring him down. And they're going to get Sacred there as well. Sacred was not able to get himself out of the ring in time, but Parker's still a problem. He's still doing damage. The supports, however, well, they are getting hit up, but look at Stinger popping the Refresher, goes in for a second overgrowth, but at this point, Parker says... I, I don't really have a whole lot to work with, but if Lumiere is just going to step out like that, I mean, that's just free. Yeah, and I think Parker, he might have enough gas in the tank to just do it. Carts are coming in as well. The worst possible time, at least there's no mega creeps on the top or bottom lanes. They're only coming in through oh. mid, but Parker is just a problem. I don't even know what Parker bought, but he's just continuing the fight. There's just not enough damage. There's not enough control. Get a little bit of a heal there from Analog, but eventually the creeps are going to start coming in. The trees are trying to kite the creeps around, but now Megas are thrown into the mix, and I don't think they have enough to hold. They've got maybe one more tossback play on the Dawnbreaker, surrounded by creeps, or this might just be Parker ending the game in your face. It's just so strange there. Lumiere just overextends, and Parker takes him down, because if Lumiere had okay. just sort of backed it up, he, he's he got Chrono. But now, obviously, not alive, so can't use it, and... Parker just continues to go to work. Tier 4 is dropping. Stinger, 30 seconds out from one of these overgrowths. He's just trying to sort of hide while his teammate does the work. The other Tier 4 will fall, but there's the tossback play. Are they able to finish the job? Parker, standing his ground, hasn't popped his BKB. That match community is from the Starbreaker instead. Now the BKB, though, will be deployed. He's getting onto Vitali. Not able to take him down, though. The self-sprout will keep him alive, and Stinger... Decides, I gotta get in there just to defend my teammate, and while that happens, E.T., Megas take the Ancient. <laughs> yeah, it's a funny end to a funny game, but Beast Coast, they just use the map too well. They've got too many teamfight abilities. There's that awkward window of what feels like 10 to 15 minutes where Alliance Lottom, all they can do is just wait for the BKBs, and it's one of the issues of this Monkey King pick, and even though... I love it. They've got a timing. They've got a window for them to play. Not only was he unable to really shut down or shut out Dark Mago in the mid lane, then you just have a worse carry on your team. And sadly, it's just too passive. In addition to the Nature's Prophet in your off lane, just felt like there was no play to make. And then while you're waiting for your play that doesn't exist, well, Misha gets a Blink Dagger. You play with that for two minutes, and then suddenly everybody has a BKB, and now the Tiny can't play either. It's just where Beast Coast got to take this game and draw it out to exactly where they wanted to. And we're just always in the driver's seat. They were always the team making the play. Alliance were always the ones reacting. And I think maybe that's where, sadly, Lumiere Void, it's a great pick. It's a great choice. But I think paired with heroes that just didn't feel very cohesive. The Void on top, you know, it can look good on its own. But without a Snapfire, without a Zeus, without any damage, it's just not enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is... The very unfortunate thing there, Lumiere, stat line still looks good, 10, 4, and 12 is certainly respectable, but we never got to see him hunt for his Chronos here play, right? And if your face is void, has to ult defensively or reactively every single time, odds are you're not winning too many of those engagements. And then, of course, as you mentioned, Vitaly and Analog really could not pick up the slack. Vitaly in particular just was not ever really a factor. Yeah, just picked off, constantly shoved to the side lanes, the farthest out he could be in the side lanes, and whenever he wasn't getting picked off, well, Analog was getting picked off, because Beast Coast just had lane wards, they knew that you were going to have to dodge him out, and they just weren't able to avoid them successfully enough, and I think that's where maybe next game, Alliance Lottom look less so at the counters, and more so for just the lineup that works a little bit more, because I think this was a draft without a mid laner, Without damage for the Chrono, just feels like they try to go in a few too many different directions. And even Beast, Beast Coast got a little bit weird too, you know? They definitely had some untraditional heroes, but 
I think that's where game two probably sees something very different out of Alliance Lottom. Mm-hmm. We'll see if Alliance make those changes and if they just maybe pare it down a little bit, simplify the strategy, get something that they can really just execute on, maybe not flawlessly, but close to it compared to this, which had a lot of moving parts. So we'll have to see. Game two draft coming our way in just about 10 minutes here. So we are going to hop into another break and when we come back, we'll see if East Coast take it 2-0 or if Alliance Lottom can push us to a full three games. So stick around. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> 